Hello comrades, Kamisa bro here today in my like mission to play every single game I could possibly get my hands on. That's right. Now, this game is called Mad Games Tycoon. Oh, it's another game developer tycoon. Oh fuck. Yeah, no, yeah, it is. But it's actually really friggin' fun. And dare I say, I like this, even though it's still early access and far from being finished, I like this more than any other game developer tycoon type game, like Game Dev Tycoon, that I've ever played. And as far as tycoon games go, it's a pretty solid title, like, it's no way near being done, but there's just, there's a lot of depth. Depth, depth, <laughs> depth. There's a lot of depth. There's a lot of thought that's gone into this game, and it it really pay, it really bleeds through. For example, let's say you know we just started out, right? All you have is your little development room. You uh, you might have enough room to build a uh, a research place, which is this over here. So as you can see, obviously. This is really late in the game. This is actually 2027. I have a thriving video game company, and I don't even have to have the biggest office I can get. Look, I've only got the huge office. There's still a bigger one. Yeah, check that out. So, I'm pretty far in the game, and I've done just about everything you can do. I have the, well, at least as far as this game is concerned right now. They're still going to be adding in new stuff, as you can see. Motion capturing, graphic studio, so on and so forth. And that's where this game is really different from, uh, say, Game Dev Tycoon. Where in that game, you have to focus a lot more on actually creating the games. This one, you focus a lot more on everything else. Now, you still have, you know, obviously a gameplay, aesthetic... Uh, sound and music, technology, and then bugs. As you can see, those are the five different categories in the game. But it's just, I don't know, its, it's it has less sliders and whatnot that you can maneuver. There's still quite a few, and when this game is done, I'll actually show you, uh, you know, exactly what you can do. Anyway, I keep getting distracted because there's just so much to talk about this game, and I don't really know where to start. So, yeah, let's basically just start with the usual lifespan and what can happen, what you can do, so on and so forth. Uh, so, I'm creating a game right now. It's called Fire the Bomb 2. I just picked a random name. Uh, and as you can see, it's only 47% done. This is a very, very intensive game. I've already got, look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 employees working on it. And look, there's me this zebra right there. Yes, I'm right there. You can actually train all your employees to make them better at their jobs right over here in the training room alternatively they can get better just over time uh, you can also have more like you can actually build more desks in there which I'm gonna show you real quick yeah we'll build it like that oh yes check out that sex magnet oh isn't that just almost more than you can bear oh, yes. anyway so as you see, we built a bunch more desks in there, so now we've actually got room for more employees. If I want, I can pluck one of my swarthy recruits out of the training room and throw him in there. And uh, he'll start working there as soon as he's able to. And he'll actually start working on um, the game to assist in finishing it faster. Now, with the development of a game going on, you obviously need to research stuff. Unfortunately, I've already researched everything that's currently available, so I can't really show that off. But again, it works in the same vein, the same process. You click on somebody, and you send them in there. Oh, look, it's the Mad Games Convention. We're going to pick a large booth because I'm stupid rich. Uh, because of World of Lifecraft. Yeah, that's right, World of Lifecraft. It's an MMO I created that is uh, changed the world around us, as it were. Like, seriously, it's the best-selling game of all time that still has a consistent 947,000 subscriptions. And it was the first MMO I made. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take that one. See, look, I've got the top two games in the world in terms of actual uh, numbers sold. So, yeah, check that out. All the green stuff's me. Apparently, more people... Yeah, I've, I've only got those two games really and those are the past two games I've released I think so I have high expectations for Fire the Bomb anyway so uh, what you can actually do like I said you can research get new features um, basically different levels of video game like how the actual size of the game different genres different topics you can create your own engine 
uh, again, just like, uh, what's it called, Game Dev Tycoon, except the main difference between this game and Game Dev Tycoon is I can create that engine and I can sell that motherfucker. Um, or, as I'm about to show you, you can also be a publisher. That's a huge, huge difference between this game and anyone I've ever played. You actually get to be the publisher. You actually can decide what goes in to the box. As you can see, I could throw everything in the box. And let's put a big... Let's, let's make this a $49 game. Oh, it's expensive. It's so expensive. And look, it did great. And the fact that we put a bunch of stuff in it gave it a uh, thumbs up on that, on that as well. So, now we go over here. Well, wait, wait, over here to our production room. And what's this game? Skateboard Fever. All right, we're going to build. We're, we're going to need quite a few copies, I'm sure. I'm going to make two million. So, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, that's two million copies. And we're going to start producing them. Now, the game, we get to choose when it gets released. You can go up to 24 weeks. Uh, we only got about 10 weeks. I'm sure that's plenty of time. I'm going to speed the game up a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's to get all that stuff built. Hopefully, we're not wasting a bunch of money because it's, it's really expensive to make all these games. Um, here's another game from Red Isle Studios. Yeah, sure. We'll do this one in 24 months. Or 24 weeks, I mean. And we'll just throw in a poster. There we go. All right, good. It did well. So, 81%. I've noticed most games that are made by other people tend to do good. I've yet to see an AI make a game that sucks. So... Uh, but trust me, you can make games that are terrible. I've done it quite a few times. Anyway, let's go back to the development process. Let's slow the game down a bit. Oh, and look, we're actually selling Skateboard Fever, uh, Fever 2 now. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for the first week to end just so we can see how well it sold. Oh! That didn't sell as well as I thought it would. We only sold 46,000 copies in the first week. So we're going to start producing uh, so we don't lose our money. Anyway, back to the development. So as you can see, our guys are sitting here working on it, creating the game, working on uh, all the different features that uh, are in the game. So what you can do while the developer's doing that, you can uh, set your quality assurance group to actually ironing out the game, getting rid of most of the bugs. Again, there's no real limitation on how big these departments are. It's purely how big you want to make it. And in this case, I'm going to expand the quality assurance uh, department. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. I can, I can do this. Yeah, I'm just going to put it right there. I don't care. I'm not much of a designer myself, so yes, don't be surprised. And you can hire a bunch of people. The people you can actually hire uh, is based on the quality of your office. The quality of the office goes up. As you, And this right here is where we actually sold our engine. And someone paid us 500000 to use the engine. And then they made $11 million in profit. So we got 25% of the profit being... 2.77 million grand total of our profit that we made just from creating an engine and putting it on the market having the best engine on the market we got three million dollars so basically it helped pay for the development of this game yay and look world of lorecraft his uh, lifecraft has made almost 400 million dollars that's a big deal but anyway back to what i was saying so yeah so you can it, pretty much the only limitation on hiring people is the quality of the office, which in this case, 301, is pretty damn high. So I can go to highest staff, and uh, yeah, what do you know? There's plenty of people to choose from. People have certain skills, certain games they're good at, certain things they're good at, and then they also have certain requirements if they're going to work for you. This guy's only requirement is that you have a fan. Pete Nolamu here, his only requirement is that you have a toilet. Right. So we're going to hire this guy, Joseph Ledger. Uh, he's got really high in game design. He sucks in other stuff, but eh, no big deal, no big deal. And we're going to throw him in to Quality Assurance. And he's going to start working for us. That's right, that's right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this game also has plans to add a bunch more features as time goes on. Again, this is just early access, and that's, you know, this is just, I'm just basically showing little tidbits here and there. And why I think this game is so much friggin' fun. Uh, it's just so much fun. It's ridiculous how much fun this game is. But, um, and it's addicting, like, especially. Ooh, look, we got the studio of the year, Fix Saga. Woo, go us. Uh, I love the publisher part. That's, like, my favorite part. 
Plus, because you can sit there and build up income just by uh, producing good games, being sure to man not make too many copies, don't put too many uh, like items in the packages like what I did here. I made way too many copies for a game that I thought was going to sell really, really, really well uh, because it got an 80 out of 100, and I put all those those contents in the package. And now look, I'm I'm may not break even on this game, which is, would be the first time that's happened. Amazingly enough, I normally make my money. Oh shit! I forgot we've got this game. We got to stop producing for strike two, and that happens too. You actually, if you take on too many projects, like too many games, that will actually happen. So yeah, yeah, keep that in mind. You got to pay attention. So the next studio. In our, uh, our our list of or the next apartment anyway, as you can see, that's the bathroom. The next apartment we've got though is uh, right here, the music studio department, where you can basically improve the sounds of the games you're working on. So let's say uh, we want cinematic music in Fire the Bomb 2. So they're going to start working in tandem with the guys down there, and uh, we are going to improve the gameplay of Fire the Bomb 2 as well by adding in extra levels yes so it's simple stuff but it's all at the end of the day it's a good tycoon game where you're actually worrying about managing your money and whatnot so yeah and then this department over here is your customer support department so in the customer support department you need a certain amount of people working in there to keep up with your growing fan base as you can see we have a guaranteed 1.4 million fans now, it takes this whole fully stocked apartment to be able to get that. Oh, shit, monkeys. Look, we just sold 200,000 copies of Strike 2 in the first week. Yeah, so that's going to be a good money-making game. The problem we have now is though we started producing too late, so we're going to end up uh, running out of stock before we can keep up with how much we're selling. So, yeah, that's where we should have started earlier. Had I been paying attention, we probably would be fine. But again, as you can see up here with Skateboard Fever, we are taking a huge, an absolutely huge loss with that game. So, yeah, that sucks. But anyway, back to the... <laughs> I'm sorry I keep getting so distracted. There's so much to talk about in this game. It's so little time. But anyway, so the customer support department. What I was saying before, you need a certain amount to keep the fans happy. Then you can also start fan campaigns like a game fair, high school championship. Let's do that. High school championship. Now... To build up hype for your game, one thing they don't really show is like how hyped your game is. Um, but I do know that you can increase the hype over here in the marketing department. As I can go to a marketing campaign, and let's put a huge marketing campaign for World of Lifecraft. Well, actually, it's kind of too late for that. The game's already done selling for the most part. Um, let's do uh, Fight a Bomb 2. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do Strike 2 since it's doing so well. We're going to do a TV ad. Yeah, we're going to be advertising this bad boy all over TV. That's right. So as you can see, we've got this huge, huge game studio that is producing games, uh, developing games. You know, we've got all these departments working in tandem to get projects out there, get things done. You know, your, 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 your studio actually over time gets realistically big unlike game devs tycoon where you had like at most seven guys or eight guys so like this one is a lot I, I like it it seems more realistic it seems more like tycoon and yeah it's just it's cool like that I really really like that so I, I kind I gotta say even though this game's nowhere near being done this is a hell of a package and I am not complaining about what I paid for this is a really cool game and I would suggest it to anybody really it's, it's, I don't know, I'm, I'm very much enjoying this. Oh, and that was the other room I forgot to mention, was the server room. When you build MMOs, again, like World of Lifecraft, you need a certain player capacity. Now, I've obviously built this room way bigger than I needed to. I actually probably could have cut it in half and still had more than enough to handle the people playing my games, but eh, whatever. It happens. Needless to say... This is, uh, this is, this is, yeah, where, where all the magic happens over there. There's really not much with that room right now. You can change the subscription price, uh, which I think I'll drop it down to $5 a month to see if that helps the, 
the subscriber base any. Probably not. Over time, it's just going to die out. But then again, it has been going for 176 months. So that's longer than, or no, 176 weeks. So what is that, like close to three years? Three years, almost four years? So yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's just doing great. It's, it's staying along, isn't it? So yeah. But anyway, this has been Commissar Bro. Thank you so much for taking your time to check out this video. I am pretty excited about this game. I can't wait to actually see the finished product. It being early access. This is a hell of an early access game that is constantly being updated by the developers who have put in insane amount of work. And uh, look, we actually made a profit off that Skateboard Fever 2 game. Not much though, mind you, not much. But we did make a profit. But anyway, yeah, so they're putting in a hell of a lot of work and I'm really excited to see the finished product. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I will see you guys next time.